boy, just be yourself. If people don't like you, if you're being yourself, fuck them. Yeah. Hollywood and welcome to another episode of The Noise. I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point we probably can tell now, bro. I'm 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 so exhausted. <laughs> like that's because you'd be up partying all night. You know what's funny? Without me, we weren't even partying. Well, you was at the drive-in. I wasn't at the drive-in. <laughs> I was at home. But um, what's funny is that we weren't even partying, bro. We just we we did what what Vegas people do when downtown. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't go people that aren't from las vegas we don't go to the strip nope at least not often mm-hmm. you know it's when you live here it kind of takes away the lore the the prestige the the Absolutely. enjoyment of the strip it kind of gets gone because you drive past it every day well yeah you drive past it, but it has been times where um I you know I, I don't go on a trip but I'll drive down and be like damn I ain't been down here in a while it's, yeah when you go you down know? there and you see some new stuff built it's like oh okay yeah. all right well you know they they down here make things a little more cluttered that's right. cool right there's more shit for me not to come see exactly and we'll come see you six months later <laughs> but since I'm actually down there for employment I see it every okay, every time I'm scheduled you know what I mean yeah I live clear on the other side of town yeah. so I don't see it so that's so that's why I take my turn up downtown it may mm-hmm. not be the safest thing to do all the time <laughs> but sometimes it's a good time last night was kind of boring but um you know we were still dedicated to having drinks Okay. It was actually me, Jay Alonzo, and um, my uh, my bros from UTC. Chips was good boy, and we, you know, had some alcohol. You mm-hmm. know, didn't go too crazy because again, wasn't really much going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But being down there kind of opened my eyes a little more to what to the the, the poverty. In Las Vegas. <laughs> poverty? You had to go downtown to see poverty? I can take you to see some poverty if you want to oh, see yeah, poverty. Oh, yeah, of course. Naturally, you know, you can go to L.A. and you'll see it on one whole block when you get off the freeway. <laughs> but um, as far as Vegas is concerned, mm-hmm. so just kind of share this story with everybody. And I, you're going to think I'm being insensitive. I, I, I truly don't care. Not while I'm this tired, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but we got off the elevator where we were parked at. We got off the elevator. And I don't know what the official name for these rooms are. Mm-hmm. That we're going to just say the elevator room. where You got to walk in the door and there's like four elevators. You choose when you're supposed to get on or whatever. Okay, okay. So we get to the elevator room. And the most pungent, foul, just ugh, smell. Just, it, it, it just took over the entire <laughs> elevator. <laughs> so once it finally got opened all the way, it was actually um, three homeless dudes that were sleeping there. Like knocked the fuck out. Were they sleep like together? No, or no, no. Like... They, they, they were spaced out. It was okay. almost like a, it looked like a dorm room, but just you know for homeless people. What time of day was this? This was like ten. And they sleep like ten o'clock, maybe. You think that'd be peak hours for a homeless person? Exactly. Go get his bread up, you right. know. Right. But um, they were especially on a Friday night. On a Friday night yeah. downtown at that. No, no. Granted, it was, it was some of them out there working. Mm-hmm. It was some of them out there definitely working. But these three was like, nah, we're gonna catch these winks <laughs> and we're gonna get at it. We're gonna get at it in the morning. <laughs> But, um, again, I do feel for homeless people. I, you know, I definitely think that, especially Las Vegas, we got to get a better program together for um, the, the, the homeless people out here. You know, at least mm-hmm. shel- uh, shelters or something like that. Right. But, man, this was one of the worst smells I have ever <laughs> experienced in life. So you can tell by, by the fact that they smelled that bad that they were true homeless. They weren't the people that's fake homeless trying to get some money. Exactly. And, you know, well, that and the obvious sleeping on tile. You yeah. Know, that, that, yeah. That's that. kind of another day giveaway a little yeah. bit. But that smell was crazy, dude. You know, it I don't was even. So wild. I can I can picture them sleeping in my head, and I don't want to picture it. I don't, I don't want to smell that. Like, it, I, I it's, it's, it's not good you know mm-hmm. you know what's so bad about it is that when you walk outside and then there's a fly and then the fly lands on you you instantly get upset because you know the fly was once on him <laughs> so it's like ah this is almost as bad as, as the bum bump you know what i mean like no i don't want to deal with this right now <laughs> like your first thought is i gotta murder that fly no matter what i do before i leave this box of death i'm gonna have to murder that fly <laughs> because the fly just just transferring shit just from transferring shit from him to me you know what i'm saying selfish ass fly but that's funny. <laughs> another funny thing I actually saw down there. I don't know if this dude was homeless mm-hmm. or if he, the music just lives within him. <laughs> but I, if anybody's friends with me on Snapchat, you would have saw. So this dude, he was outside of one of the clubs, mm-hmm. grooving, grooving. I'm like, I saw. I've seen Big Sean fans, and then there was my man's outside the club. It was something <laughs> completely different. 
I'm talking about he had the full slide. He was hitting, the, you know what I'm saying, to your dig. And everybody was walking over, dancing with him. I'm like, you know what? He's making the most out of his situation. <laughs> if he's homeless, he's living life. If he's life. homeless, he's the happiest man out here right now. Because there wasn't niggas out there that were drinking that was as happy. We're going to call him Phil. That was as happy as Phil. <laughs> Phil, was, Phil was the littest <laughs> of the night. <laughs> That's funny. He just gave this man a name. His name is Phil. <laughs> Shout out to Phil, man. Well, then, well, I initially called him brother in the collared shirt and the sweatpants because that was his attire for the night. A collared shirt and sweatpants. And some gray sweatpants. It was like a yellow collar shirt. So he was the cleanest <laughs> nigga out there at that. He was out there putting everybody on to some new shit. Like Kanye ain't, been, ain't gone to this level yet. That's because Kanye is still, you know, he's still in the dark ages when it comes to dressing. Still in the sunken place? Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, that was actually very rude of me. I normally ask my co-host, how was your week, sir? How was your week? Um, My week was the same as it always is. Oh, okay. Boring. Okay, them hemorrhoids still giving you hey, the blues, brother? Again, eat a bowl of shit. Don't no. have hemorrhoids. Okay. Especially <laughs> after that smell last night. I don't want to do anything <laughs> remotely close to that, that kind of smell and thinking about Taking that in, no, I'm good. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, my my week was my week was chill, man. Uh, um, my peoples came out here. I mean, the circumstances on why he had to come out here weren't very good, but luckily that situation improved. Um, I ended up taking him back home because I ain't have nothing to do um, to Arizona. Mm. And let me tell you, Arizona darkness desert, Kevin. Don't mix. You don't mix. <laughs> I'm not. Now uh, maybe maybe if I had a, a weapon on me, you did. Of sorts. Call your car. Yeah, anybody yeah. become a speed bump. You're right. You're absolutely right. But I mean, you you feel you feel a little bit comfortable, more comfortable when you got that hammer on your hip. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Okay. So yeah, I, I'm just not messing with the dark, man. I don't know. Again, from from driving from Cali in the dark, mm-hmm. you can do that all day. Hey, it's, it's That's easy. easy. Kate, yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't know if it's because of the openness of the Arizona desert, mm. but I ain't fucking with it. I've never been out to Arizona, but I hear that that drive is just, is just you and your thoughts. Like, it's it, it truly else is. On that it truly way. is. And then, I mean, when I, when we were out, when I was driving back, it, it's fucking Wednesday. Mm. So, there aren't any cars. Ain't, ain't no spring breakers. It ain't the weekend. It's, it's not, it's no traffic. You know what I mean? It's so, I'm almost off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just me and You and me. Wednesday, yeah. basically. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I wasn't rocking with it, but, Outside of that, man, my week was chill. I didn't. I That's didn't like do the much. perfect opportunity to do like a buck twenty, though. Oh yeah, I was definitely hitting up. Like, like you definitely push your car to, to yeah. the places it can and can't go. That's yeah. where you learn your car. Yeah, absolutely. It's on absolutely. Open road days I, like I was that. getting so I was driving so fast at times. I was like, let me slow down. I'm getting a little carried away. Right, I tell you, you know what I mean. Same thing happened to me when I was in Ohio when uh, the homie came and picked me up out of out of uh, Cleveland and we went down to Dayton. Mm-hmm. Boy, it was nobody on the street. I was easily <laughs> doing one ten, one fifteen, just swerving through the lanes because yeah. nobody stopped me. Yeah, until I got pulled over. <laughs> and, and, and you know it's crazy. I was I was doing I was driving. You know, like I was in NASCAR or something. Mm-hmm. And then in the distance, I see lights. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to police. Mm-hmm. Brother, they was doing construction in the middle of the desert. Were they, like, moving dirt? Or, like, what was nah, they doing? Nah, I don't. I, I, honestly, I don't know too much. I don't know if they were repairing the road. The road seemed fine to me, mm-hmm. but they were doing construction. And it made me think, like, who the fuck would I take this job to go do construction in the middle of the desert? Right. If they tell, If I'm a construction worker and they tell me, hey, you got to go out there in the middle of the desert, do some work. I'm going to be like, you know what? I don't feel good today. I'm not going. <laughs> hey, man, I can't. I got the shits, bro. Yeah, it's something. You something. know what I mean? But I had to slow down after that because I was like, you know what? It might be cops lurking. Because when they were doing construction, they would have a police car, you know, just just there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not fucking with that. But, yeah, I, I'm not doing an Arizona desert thing. Bro, when we were driving to the Bay, we were driving to Oakland for uh, my frat brother's wedding. Mm-hmm. And um, we was on the road. Now, I wasn't all dirt and deserted like where you were going. But, um People were like, I, I was trying to follow the speed limit because I'm like, I'm not trying to get caught by one of these right, little right. random ass speed traps. There was this old dude. I forgot what car he had, but he passed up everybody. Now, mind you, I'm already doing like 85, 90. Mm-hmm. He passed up everybody and just gave everybody the middle finger. I'm like, <laughs> I'd be damned. He's going to be dead in three years. I'd be damned <laughs> if he's going to just scoot past me like I'm a bitch. Like I'm out here <laughs> driving slow. So I, I picked up speed with him. We was out there going toe to toe. It was like Fast and the Furious. Just getting it. Fast and the Furious when Don't. I was racing. Exactly. The mm-hmm. first one through three. I, I will <laughs> say, man, I was out there and I mean, you, you can believe me if you're not, but I, I was driving and um, I, I can't remember exactly where I was. I wasn't in no major city or didn't hit no major town or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving and in the distance, now mind you, I'm the only car out there. So in the distance, I kept seeing what looked like it, it, looked like it was a car, but only had one headlight. 
Now, right. I'm driving, and I'm like, okay, there's a car, but you only got one headlight. That's kind of odd for you to have one headlight. Drive, it's pitch black out here. Right. You know what I mean? And then the car disappeared. And then oh, it that was a up. ghost. And then it would disappear. I, I kid you not. <laughs> it did that. And after a while, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. So I sped up so fast. Mm. So, like, if it is a ghost and he's chasing me, this nigga's not going to catch me. I don't I don't think ghosts <laughs> just, like, tire out like that. I, I, I think they, I don't know. But it, they're, it was they're just, pretty committed to what they're trying to I do. I don't know. It was just really weird because I hadn't seen nothing like that out there. You know what mm. I mean? It wasn't no more. After a while, no motorcycles passed me or anything. So I'm like, what the hell was that? And it wasn't no town that he could have turned off on. Mm. So it was just weird. It was an alien. Alien or ghost. It could have been. And, you know, that crossed my mind, too. I was like, yo, what if I get fucking abducted out here? Mm. I was like. Yeah, that's different getting kidnapped. Like, yeah, you, like, like, what if I get abducted uh, out here? You know what I mean? Like, who? nobody would know. You know what I mean? Nobody mm-hmm. would know what the hell happened. They'd be like, hey, he left. You know what I mean? He, he's gone. He's, mm-hmm. he's never coming back. Like, it'd be crazy. That's true. I mean, shit, even if you were abducted by actual kidnappers, that's still you still would have kind of been fucked, but you'd have had a better chance. I don't think you could do too much against Mars attacks. Exactly. It's not much you necessarily yeah, you do in that mean? situation. And yeah, yeah. But outside of that, man, my week was cool. It wasn't as a, as uh, fun as your your weekend, your night. You know. That, that, that was literally it though. It was my night too. <laughs> Single. You know what I did all day today? Nothing. Two Fs, nothing. <laughs> not a single Fs. thing. Capitalize Fs. Ain't even get no sleep today. I was like, I could have utilized all that time and been so asleep. Did you not get any sleep because you was partying that hard, or mm-hmm. why? Did- I just don't sleep. I mean, we we talked about this on one of the episodes. Like, you you know you don't sleep and you got too much going on when you, when you start having dreams about things that happen in your regular day. <laughs> like I had a dream I was checking in an annoying guest. Damn, that was a that was a, a nightmare technically, but. It was just like, God, and I know I'm doing this too much. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you start having dreams about work, yeah, it's, it's where it immediately gets you. Yeah, it's, it's getting too much at this point. But to get to the favorite part of the day, which is <laughs> recording this show, ah, <sighs> so many things to talk about. Yeah, we got a few, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep it reduced. Of course, we, uh, y'all already saw what Trump did, loving politics. There it is. Just, <laughs> just leave it at that. Just I can't it. stand that, man. Uh, hey, but at least he admitted it. Yeah, but it, it's one of those things like, really, bro? Did you really like think it would be anything other than difficult? Yes. <laughs> he said he's, he thought he was going to run it like a business. Found out it's a lot easier to run his business than it is, you know, the country. You know, 100 days in. and I did see something where he said he misses driving. So go drive. Right. Like, you miss a driving. Like, how about you resign and just be an Uber? Right. Since you miss driving so much. That's all you can do is just go Uber, Lyft. But, then they got, like, they got Sidecar in San Francisco. He got a bunch of options. But with with him admitting this publicly, per se, mm-hmm. um, do you think that it would get to a point where it becomes so overwhelming that he does Nah. Resign, nah. Because he boy, he's boys with Mike Pence. He'd be like, you know what, Mike, go ahead and you, do this shit, man. You got I'm, it, I'm bro. Good. Only because only, only reason I don't see that happening is because he's not one. He's not one to admit that he got an L. Now he takes a lot of L's. Mm-hmm. Now more than the next guy we're gonna bring up, but he takes a lot of L's. Mm-hmm. He's never really been the one to admit that this is an L. But I mean, he he t- t- kind of he did though by him admitting that he thought it would be easier. Yeah, but I, when you really look at the interview, he's. He's kind of like, he doesn't look pressed that it was harder. Mm-hmm. He's just saying like, you know, I thought it'd be easier. Okay, I'm being forced to work and this mm-hmm. is the stuff that I miss or whatever. We all know what he means by that. We know that he's stressed the fuck out. Right. And he really don't want to be president no more. You remember when they said uh, somebody was in the back with him? And um, during one of the little, um, con- not conventions, but what is it called when they get all the people together and you talk to him? One of the rallies. There you go. Mm-hmm. At one of the rallies, he went to the back and was like, I may really win this. Yeah. So he didn't expect to be where he's at in the first place. Mm-hmm. But again, we're just going to leave it at that. I'm just happy the dude admitted that he really does suck as president. <laughs> in, you know, fewer words. Right. Well, in so many words, rather. You know, he sucks as president. And I'm glad he sees that. So the next L is the originator hmm. of the L. He set, he made the path for Meek Mill to come through. <laughs> And take the L's. <laughs> he drew the letter L. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back Ja Rule. See, we need little hand claps. Exactly. We need some little, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, all that whole joint. So, 
this is something that kind of was slipped under the radar, but it's actually starting to trend a hell of a lot more now. I've actually, I've never heard of the Fire Festival no. prior to this announcement. That's probably because the shit didn't exist until did, now. Exactly. I didn't I don't remember seeing any kind of ads, any mm-hmm. kind of uh, mm-hmm. commercials, any kind of shit, tickets, nobody talking about, I'm going to the Fire nope. Festival, none exactly. of that. Exactly. But you know why you didn't hear anything about that? Because <laughs> the shit was $12,000. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, actually, let me go. I'm through. listening. I don't give a damn if if Jesus is coming back. I'm not paying twelve thousand to go see him. <laughs> so in the main the main event is, is Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus and Pac on the no. main stage. You ain't going. <laughs> no, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'll wait for somebody to stream it. I'll wait a couple weeks and, and see the video I'll on catch YouTube. I'm not. I'm not paying twelve thousand to go see nobody. So the Fire Festival, ladies and gentlemen, was a um, a festival in the Bahamas set up by Ja Rule and um, who was the other guy? Some random. I know Kylie Jenner. She was promoting it. Well, it was Ja, it was ja Rule and other guy. Mm-hmm. And um, from the reports I'm seeing, at least, it was $12,000 to attend. And that, in, that included uh, charter planes, uh, 737 charter planes, as they mentioned, flying 12 times a day back and forth from Miami to the actual event. Uh, covered entry to everything. It covered your luxurious uh, sleeping arrangements and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. Oh, but when niggas got there. <laughs> <laughs> so they promised people luxury cabanas and lodging. Mm-hmm. They get there to New Orleans, Hurricane Katrina relief tents. <laughs> yeah, those tents were bad. Bro, I've seen better tents when people like go camping exactly. than what they had. And I'm talking about these thrown together tents mm-hmm. that look better than some of these tents they have. But yeah. it was all it, it looked like some shit out of uh, Resident Evil or after day after a day after yeah. tomorrow, but it was look it, it looked so tragic. Like it looked so mm-hmm. sad. I'm like when look. you seen the picture, you was like, "Hold on, something going on in the Bahamas." The first thing about? I first thing I thought was refugee camp. I'm like, yeah. "Nah, bro, this ain't working out. Y'all setting us up for the okie doke." But uh yeah, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> They said they had luxury festival meals. They, like, you know, cats were supposed to be eating real good because, you know, mm-hmm. you just paid $12,000 for a goddamn festival. That 12000 don't even include the plane ticket to get to Miami. Yeah, it doesn't include the plane ticket. I'm pretty sure it was part of the package. I'm, like, but I'm the pretty package sure. of the actual festival. If I'm saying, festival, like, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you live in L.A. and you got to fly to Miami, mm-hmm. then, you know what I mean, you're, you're getting flown back and forth. That's a lot of money. Yeah, because the 12000 includes the charter plane from Miami to the festival yeah. grounds. And that's not even including the people that just flew directly there. Mm-hmm. So I guess everybody started arrive, arriving on a Thursday, and that's when they saw uh, the refugee camp. And when they start, when they got their food, this is the crazy shit. I'd be damned if somebody promised me some luxury food, and you pull out some prison shit. <laughs> Bro, it was two slices of wheat bread, mm-hmm. one slice of, of uh, I want to say provolone cheese, mm-hmm. and some old-ass salad. Mm-hmm. This, this this is the luxury they, meal. They had, a, they had a cheese sandwich. They had a cheese sandwich. Not with, even a with, grilled cheese. Yeah, they had a cheese sandwich with lettuce and tomato. With lettuce and, and one tomato. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even cut up for the actual salad. It was just, <laughs> just throw that shit on there. <laughs> probably wasn't even part of the lettuce. That was a part of the uh, the meal. They're probably, it was probably somebody, McDonald's, like, oh, I hate right. tomato. I'm like, hey, throw it in here. <laughs> somebody eat it. That's wild. Now these idiots paid for that. And then there's more. So you know how when you go to festivals, when you really go anywhere that has a bunch of people there, you get like lockers that you want to that you can lock your shit up and right, right. you know go about your business. So they had lockers, um, for everybody you know for I- I- any of my you know skaters out there. Mm-hmm. We go to the roller rink. They got the little lockers you can put your shoes in. Yeah. That's what the lockers looked like at the festival. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. The only issue: what is the what is the key thing when it comes down to lockers? What is something that you just absolutely need with a locker? To be able to lock your shit up. To be able to lock your shit up. Why these lockers they have no locks? <laughs> so basically, they was just it was just a, a file cabinet. Basically. basically, yeah. At the end of the day, it was just somewhere you. Could, it was a, it was it was a thief's uh, pickings that day. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> do I want a coach or do I want <laughs> some Jordans? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. That's wild, bro. I'd start breaking shit. If whatever wasn't broken, I'd start breaking it. <laughs> That's wild, like bro. I, I I don't think. See, this is this is why that was twelve thousand dollars, and it targeted a certain group of people if you will mm-hmm. because had it been me and you at this damn festival it, it wouldn't have took 24 hours for shit to be shut down when it took six yeah we like the the, the what is it do they call them bahim what do you call the bah- people uh, like bahamians or something like that yeah the, their police would have came to shut this shit down so real quick, quick real quick because i would have been tearing everything up but as soon as i saw the price tag 
anything, and this is a festival, so we'll, we'll go off of festival rules. If I'm spending anything more than two racks and for some true luxury shit at mm-hmm. that, I'm not going. Now, now, Peep Gang, listen to this lineup for the actual festival. This is mm-hmm. why I think we didn't hear about it. It just says good music. Don't mm-hmm. specify which artist, just good music. Major Laser, uh, Disclosure, who I guess they do a DJ set. Blink 182, where have they been? Uh, Migos, Lil Yachty, your boy. Uh, Clap Tone, Matoma, and Lee Youth. I don't even know. I don't, I don't know a majority of these cats. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm really not about to pay 12 stacks for that. But even still. But even before that, even before, if, if, if you saw the lineup, when I would have heard Ja Rule is behind this, I would have been like, yeah, I'm not doing it. I instantly would have lost interest. Yeah. Instantly. Because you know he's going to do a set. He's going to sneak on stage somehow. But, but even regardless, anything that has that man's man's name attached to it, why would you want to attend that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, now, it, it, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, there's nothing about that lineup that's any Mm-mm. kind of attractive. Mm-mm. Now, Blink-182, they saw the writing on the wall earlier. They was like, nah, we, <laughs> we, we ain't doing this. We're not doing it. They actually they issued a statement out to the, their fans that came to it. They said that uh, we're not confident that we would have what we need to give you the quality performances we've always given our fans. Basically, hey, they ain't got shit out there for us, so we ain't coming. Right. Now, you know what's, what's even crazier? When they, um, the Fire Festival was trying to defend, you know, well, not necessarily defend, mm-hmm. but explain exactly what happened because people started showing up Thursday mm-hmm. and the festival was, po- was postponed indefinitely Friday. So one of the things they tried to explain was they didn't expect the amount of people to show up as quick as they did. Mm -hmm. And then I guess there was a crazy ass windstorm out there Mm. that blew away some of the relief tents. So they had, you know, they had the refugees out there trying to scramble all that shit together, you know, before the next bomb hit. Mm. Bruh. Mm -hmm. So imagine showing up somewhere, lockers with no locks, half the tents blown down the street. Other half of the tents just look like some shit that I'm about to be, you know what I'm saying, in a concentration camp at least for the next two years. And Ja Rule. <laughs> now, it's, it's a couple things. If if I'm on that plane that flies out there, once once the plane lands and I see that shit, I'll be like, no, nah, I'm staying right here. All right, cool. Ta- now, like, when yeah. you go back to Miami, I'm going to ride back with all you. All right, yeah, it's I'm staying right here. But before all that, let's, let's backtrack for a second. Mm-hmm. Who, when they were putting this together, that means putting the tents out there, putting the, the file cabinets out there. In somebody's mind, this was adequate. Yep. This was okay. Because it, it's not like, you know what I mean, people just show up and we just don't. Have, it'll be different if people showed up and let's say nothing was put together. Mm-hmm. That means they just, maybe, maybe they have shit, shit just wasn't put together. But shit was put together. It just wasn't to nobody's standards. Man, when I watched the commercial, when I watched the actual ad that got people there, it looked like it was going to be a good time. Like, honestly, looking at the ad, it looks very chill but it looks turnt at the same time Mm -hmm. now it's crazy because you know they obviously use that footage from another festival because this was technically the uh this was the first one yeah so it had to be a different so they had to use a footage from a different festival that happened out in the bahamas like Mm -hmm. the way that they you know i'm saying scaled the um the footage for the uh overlooking the water and Mm -hmm. showing all of the luxury cabanas and everything that was supposed to be there Mm mm-hmm Ride, I felt so cheated. I'd be like, nah, 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 nah. See, Somebody had to give me a ride see, all man, the way back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this charter plane got to fly back to LA. No, nah, this got to give me all the way back to Vegas yeah, right now. Something. Seriously. Um, but with me, man, the way the way that I'm wired, I don't necessarily like to do things like that if it's the first event. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, let's say, let's say this was legit. You know what I mean? Everything was okay. I wouldn't want to do that. This is their first time. Let them work out the kinks. Exactly. You know what work I mean? The let, bugs let, out. let them work the shit out, get a little bit under their belt, and then you attend. You don't attend the first one because shit like this happened. You stuck in a, a, a damn refugee camp with cheese bread and and <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, and you got to sleep with your backpack because somebody's going to steal it. Because if not, somebody's definitely coming up off your backpack. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy to me. And the fact, has uh, Ja Rule came out and said anything about it? Of course he did. What did he say? So, Ja, he put out a statement saying, I wanted this to be an amazing event. It was not a scam, as everyone is reporting. I don't know how everything went so left, but I'm working to make it right by making sure everyone is refunded. I truly apologize. This is not my fault in bold caps, but I'm taking responsibility. Ja, it is your fault. (laughs) Right. Right. Brother, if, if if you are the... Let's say the the half of the top person putting this together. Then it's half your fault. It's it's, it's your fault, bro. As the originator of the L, 
as the as the initial creator of the L in hip hop. This is your fault. Yeah. This is just another L that you just showed us that you can still get mm-hmm. effortlessly, mm-hmm. almost without trying. I don't know who who's. I want to know who's the other person that went in with him on this. Uh, like, why would you think Ja is an ac- adequate person to to have a, a venture in like this? You know what I mean? Like, this is a big thing because. I'm pretty sure the people that put together Coachella or any of these other festivals, I'm pretty sure they're making a pretty nice chunk of change. I'm pretty sure they're doing just fucking fine, and they just have another Coachella not right. too long ago. You know what I mean? So to to, to put a, together a festival, that's that's gonna take. I, I would think that it would take pretty much a year. Like once you do a festival for 2017, you you gotta soon as that festival's over, you probably starting to get prepared. For the next one. For the one. next one, exactly. You know what I mean? It's going to take that Because it's going to take that time. Exactly. Yeah, they said that the Fire Festival was founded in 2015 or something like that. So they've been working on this for a little bit. And they've been working on it, and this is what they came and up this with? That's what they came up with. Refugee who, tent? I just want to know who was the guy that said cheese and bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no like, meat. We're going to still push it like it's, you know, like like it's luxury food, but cheese and bread. And then <laughs> and then they served it to him and fucking... Uh, I bet you that was Ja Rule's idea because then he did like, what, two years or something like yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> hey, they gave to him two This is gourmet. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how many license plates you got to make for this? You know how many dicks you got to suck to get this here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, they, they served that to him on fucking like styrofoam too. It wasn't mm, even like... Regular ass styrofoam. Right. You, you didn't give me no luxury plate or nothing. It was just... Here you go. Have at it. Fire Festival. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, the other dude that was a part of it, uh, his name was Billy McFarlane. He is the founder and CEO of Spling. I don't know what, what the, the hell Spling that? is, but I thought he, you were about to say Spleen. Like I was like, wait a minute, my body? He, he right, found said, it. He created. The I spleen? got all of them. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I am evolution. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know what the hell Spling is, but obviously it's something that he has a lot of money, and he's able to put together the Fire Festival along with Ja Rule, who probably doesn't have as much money as no, him. I highly doubt Ja has money. But, you know, I read something saying that they came together based off of their appreciation and love for technology and rap music. Hmm. This was the this was the deciding factor that we're going to get together and put together a luxury festival in the Bahamas. Hey, you like technology? Yeah. Hey, you like music? Yeah. Let's put together a festival. Let's, Let's do it. You got an A in your name? Me too, nigga. <laughs> Let's go. Vows on deck. <laughs> like, <laughs> there wasn't that much collaboration that created this f- fire fest. Yo, this is this is low-key how Batman versus Superman ended. They found out their mama's name is Martha, and they was like, let's do the fire festival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. That's exactly yeah, what happened. It. Your name, Mar- Your mother's name, Martha? Mine is, too. Mine is, shoot, nigga, nigga, fire festival. Let's do it. Let's get this shit going. And just like that movie, it ended so shitty. So mm, shitty. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but shout out to Ja Rule. He out here showing that, you know, L's are like herpes. Once you have them, this is just with you. Jesus Christ. Depends on when it pops up again. It all depends on how you treat it. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Can't tell me that wasn't a perfect analogy, though. No, Dog, you on. need some sleep. <laughs> I do need, and I also need some sleep, yes. I'm tired Oh, as my hell. goodness. Man. Shout out to everybody with herpes out there. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think that's necessarily being rude. Uh, you knew what you was getting into, but dumb chuss. See what I did there? <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired, y'all. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> uh, next, next topic. From L's to W's, at least. Somebody's out here catching some W's left and right when it comes down to hip-hop. Shout out to K-Dot. Yeah. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. First of all, Damn is a dope album. Absolutely. Now, and I've been saying this to a few people because everybody's like, man, you only like Damn because, you know, you love Kendrick. Like, yes, I do love Kendrick. Can't help that. Man makes fantastic music. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's better than his initial bodies of work, at least album-wise. I don't think it's better than any of the albums he's put out, but I still think it's a classic record, and I still think it's probably one of the best records, if not the best record of 2017 so far. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. Um, definitely better than that. More life elevator music for sure. Mm-hmm. Like that's that more life sound like something that should have been played on the plane ride to the Bahamas. <laughs> you can slap more life the entire <laughs> way there. You'll be good. You'll be in the mood to be in the Bahamas. All right, you'll be in the mood to get to them camps. Them get tents. To, exactly. Get straight to the concentra- Get straight to the concentration camp and go from there. More life soundtrack to the summer. <laughs> 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 but again, shout out to Kendrick Lamar and um, anybody. Let me know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or whatever. But I believe he may be the first artist since Mike to have all songs, all 14 songs from Damn, charting in the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah, I, I saw that, and if I, I think you're right with that. I don't think nobody else but Mike 
as of as of late. I know Thriller, everything in Thriller yeah. charted. Yeah. Because I think the initial Thriller was on like 10 songs, 10 yeah, or 11 th- songs, something like that. Thriller didn't have that many tracks on it. Um, but it charted. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but I think you're right. I don't... I don't I haven't heard anywhere else. It for sure hasn't been done in hip hop. It yeah, definitely hasn't been done in hip hop for sure. I agree. But I'm just talking about just in the, in the history of music. You know, I, I think he's the second guy to do it, and that's amazing. First of all, that's black excellence, straight up, mm-hmm. black boy joy all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, that, that's just an, that's a different kind of accomplishment. Like, yeah, all none of these songs were really meant to be singles. Obviously, uh, the one with him, and Rihanna, was for sure supposed to be a single. Uh, DNA, you could definitely see as a single. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, everything doesn't really sound like too much of a single single. But yeah, yeah they're not, all not a, a traditional single. Yeah, and that's I, not I, a I traditional think, single at all. Yeah, I don't think any of them were really supposed to be a traditional single. I think what's even dope, what's even doper about it is it's not like one of his songs is hundred. They said he chart he, all fourteen char- songs chart within one to sixty three. Mm, I think D- DNA is still number one. That's crazy. It's either DNA or humble. One of them is number one. The other one's number three. Somebody let me know in the comments, but. Dude, that's that's such a different feat, and mm-hmm. that makes me feel so good about hip hop. It, it goes back to my initial statement that I had about hip hop going the way of disco, even though I, I still slightly feel that way, but not in the sense of there aren't good artists who co- who can come out and just shake shit up a little bit then go away. Yeah, you know, I I think with Kendrick, man, he 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 sets the bar. I don't want to say too high, but but it's almost too high because because now you. If, if me being a competitive person, mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm in the hip hop game, I'm like you know Kendra did that okay. So my next project, I don't want to say has to uh, be just the same because it's hard to do that. Obviously, right. you know what I mean. But I'm like you know I want to put out a quality body of work to where it can't be denied. Right. You know what I mean. I think I think right now he's probably setting the bar for himself. If anything, honestly, and 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 a lot of people for some reason sleep on Cole. Between Kendrick and Cole, they're truly changing the hip-hop game as far as when it comes down to sales mm-hmm. because you got kendrick every every song on the album in the top 100 i'm sorry in, in the top 70 mm-hmm. you got cole you know back-to-back platinum with no features like they're they're ushering in a low-key new era of hip-hop like all right y'all cash y'all really want to chart y'all want to start seeing you know numbers like it's you know at least early 2000s this is what you got to do you got to come with that real shit but everybody's getting paid off of these streams getting paid so heavy for it that even yachty's platinum Really? Yeah. Um. Not his album. Um. I think one of his singles is platinum. He has a single. One of his songs, and they may be featured on. I gotta look That's into crazy. it. I, I don't follow the man. Right I, right. I just saw he on an interview. He was saying he platinum. So I'm like, okay. I, I think, man. He, not too many artists gonna go up there and, and lie, at least to that really? nature. <laughs> <laughs> now when you can look up the numbers. Yeah. Oh, but we do got some liars in the game. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, I think even with Cole, I think they set the bar for themselves because they realize that the game is heavily saturated with so much mumble rap. And so much bullshit. That, that yeah. you're not going to be able to. I mean, you can. Maybe you'll reach certain people, but you're not going to be able to get the masses of that mumble rap group mm-hmm. to be like, you know what, make real music. Right. You know what I mean? I think Kendrick set the bar with the control verse. And then, honestly, since then, he made sure that whatever he touched, he was shitting on. Everything exactly. You haven't heard a bad verse from Kendrick since he since since Section Eighty came out. Yeah, since he's actually been in the limelight, you haven't heard a bad verse from Kendrick. You, you haven't. Now he may have featured on some songs that were bad, mm-hmm. but you can't say his verse was yeah, bad. Yeah, you can't say his verse. And, was bad. and I do totally agree with you. They are setting the bar a hell of a lot higher. At the same time, it's a bar that only them, maybe Jay. There's no. I don't. Ooh, I don't think there's I don't know too who many else can really new, reach it right now. Yeah, I don't think there's too many new cats. Who can reach it? Or cats within that that's been putting out I would say debut cats within the last seven years. You know what? I would definitely say he'll come close, but probably won't reach that level would be Jeezy. Jeezy still ring in the streets when he puts out a project. Yeah, he does, but but I wasn't con- I, I really including him in this because I think what Jeezy debut album came out what, oh five? Mm-hmm. Are oh, you talking about just a new rapper? Yeah, in I mean, I'm saying no, within no, the last no, seven no one's years. coming close to that. Yeah, I, I think unless you're an OG, unless you're an OG that put out bangers, I don't think no none of these new cats is really going to come out and do that. You know, from 2010 up, 2010 up, definitely, dude. Even Drake wasn't able to do it. No, I mean he had the number one album for a minute until yeah. damn dropped, but 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 I Drake th- wasn't even able to. Yeah, do and it. I, and I think with Drake, I I I don't want to say I'm seeing a decline because I don't think. He's really gonna decline. Decline. I think though, people kind of have figured him out. 
And then I think he kind of shot himself in the foot with this whole Caribbean thing he got going. Yeah, on. it's it's unfortunately, and I, I'm not saying unfortunately like I want the man to fail or I want his money to fall off. But what I'm saying is, unfortunately, because Drake is Drake off a of name value alone, he'll mm-hmm. never decline. But I think a lot of people are starting to recognize, like you know, we kind of do like you to rap a little more. Right. Right? You know, we'll definitely right. appreciate a couple more bars. That's what you know. What that's one of my main arguments. That I put up about Drake. Mm-hmm. That I think he's a, he's an amazing artist when he raps and sings, mm-hmm. but it's sometimes the content of of what he's put the, the content he's putting out when he sings, it's it, I could just tell like it's not for me. Yeah, it's not for me whatsoever. Mm-hmm. More life I think was probably his worst project ever. You know I have I not listened to that. Project. No, I give you know I give everyone a chance just to formulate an opinion. I'd even listen to a little Yachty album once the shit finally drops. You're on your own with that one. I'm sure I'll be on my own, but again, I'd, I'd give it a listen just so I can formulate an opinion. Like I, I get enough off of his features mm-hmm. that he's trash. But it was the same thing with Young Thug. Like I was surprised that not the Barter Six, but it's another project he had, like a, like an older project, <clears throat> and I actually liked. Like twenty percent mm. of the album, maybe. I hear it's a new song that 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 Young Thug was on where he was actually spitting. I was listening to I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about it. Mm-hmm. I think in the podcast they were saying that they were the song was he he did his thing on it more so because people can actually understand and they can yeah they like, can make out a word when he his features. Now this is one thing I could definitely give Thug his features. He doesn't let you down mm-hmm. with his features. He actually put forth an effort in his features mm-hmm. whether he's doing a hook or he's going to give you a 16 i'm like okay this thug i can tolerate and i said i'm going to go out and buy his shit mm-hmm. but i know this thug can at least give me a solid single that i could rock with but, oh young thug yeah he cool but yeah. it's, it's impossible yeah but you know like i said I, I give i give everybody a listen just so i can formulate an unbiased opinion and if it's if it's whack it's whack like i didn't really like gucci all like that until um, um until um, october came out i've never liked gucci I thought Wobtober was decent. I, I was, I was, I was really, really surprised. And like I guess I gave all of his shit a listen. Mm. Well, not all of it because he put out like 107 albums, but <laughs> I gave a good chunk of it a listen. Mm-hmm. And Wobtober is probably like the, the main one to really stand out. I was like, okay, this is decent. But people also tell me, man, Wobtober was so commercial. Like, how? Yeah. <laughs> how was Wobtober commercial? I, honestly, I don't see how Gucci could be commercial. Period. Exactly. That's like, the exact same yeah. thing I said. Like, how can Gucci be commercial? Right. I don't see Gucci on no damn commercials. Right yeah. now, Little Yachty is more commercial than Gucci. Yeah. Well, of course he's more commercial. He's doing what's big in hip hop right now. Barely this spitting. Is, yeah. This is this is very 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 true. Keeping up with Kenny, there uh, there were some more uh, things attached to his name. One of the most recent ones was Troy Ave. <laughs> <That laughs> he, he said in the interview that, and it, obviously this isn't verbatim. I can't find the actual quote well i did i heard that's a quote but i'm about to copy it all down but he was saying that you know ken you know kendrick reached out to him or Mm -hmm. reached out to his people while he was prison telling them you know hold your head you know you know you're gonna be good when you get out you know just make it through that time do whatever whatever so troy ave took that took kendrick reaching out to him like you know what we going to la we gonna go holler at them about you know getting down with tde and he said that, that, that that top dog in tde was looking to sign him the next day, Top Dog tweeted out, for the record, I never had a conversation with Troy Av or anyone in his camp. Neither has K-Dot. Yesterday's story was fake news. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this, is what, this is what I was talking about with, you can't lie on your numbers because numbers don't lie. Right. But you can definitely fact check a story that you tell mm-hmm. <laughs> easily. Mm-hmm. So Troy Av, he tried to defend that. He went on a radio show the following day or the day after. And he was saying that, you know, I didn't say that they was pursuing me. And then he went to repeat what he said. It's like, so you were going to them to look for a deal. Either way, man, I, I you were boasting about being independent. And you were searching a deal. Right. Because he probably need that bread. With all these legal issues coming up, he need that money. Oh, yeah, easily. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, but he's new Pac. You know, he used to it. Man, Troy <laughs> Ave is a clown to me. He's a clown to me. On his on his actual song because I don't think he's good and he's a clown for what he does in the streets. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's sadly he's gonna be another tragic statistic. I don't think uh, I, I don't think it's gonna be a statistic, but he's definitely gonna halt his own rise. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's that. That's for better words. Yeah, that's exactly that, what's gonna that, happen. That, that, I could definitely see that happening. He had, he's way too cocky in his delivery and how he carries himself as an artist. He's he's real cocky for a person who hasn't accomplished nothing. I was just about to say that like, he's way too cocky in his deliverance as an artist, but he doesn't have the resume to have yeah. that confidence is one is one thing, but to have that much cockiness behind your name, you know, to feel like you got that much clout in the industry. I think they said his first, his first, I remember his first record drop, and I think they said it sold ten thousand copies. Yeah, Troy Average is what they were calling them. Yeah, like 10,000 copies. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not selling albums, so I don't know per se. Mm -hmm. But from the music that I've been around and the shit that I've seen, 10,000 copies, bro, like total. It's funny because I actually had an argument with somebody about Troy Ave. And um, it was me talking about when you're in that position, you know, for the reason he caught the bid in the first place. When you're in this position you know, to better yourself. And we had the conversation on the show before you gotta leave that shit alone. Yeah. And everybody was trying to make excuses as to why Troy app was busting back. Oh, his homie was hemmed up. So he had to bust back to get him out. Like, yeah. Okay. That I would understand. But if that's not being reported and if mm -hmm. he's not even saying that, why are y'all rushing to defend what this nigga was doing? Cause as of right now, from what I'm seeing and hearing from his lips and uh, what from these reports, him busting in that club was unnecessary. He's just trying to show that he's still with the shits. Right. And you can be with the shits, but you can also be smart about it. There, there's, a, there's a difference between putting yourself in a situation and then defending yourself in a situation. And creating the situation. Yeah, you know that. what I mean? And if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a rapper, let's say you're a rapper and you got a little name for yourself. Um, yeah, you're going to have your entourage. When shit like that happens, your first priority is to get the fuck out of whatever area you're in that exactly. that's going on. You know what I mean? And let's say, you're, the, you're the money. Exactly. You're the reason that all these cats are eating. So you're going to go get involved in the shit that exactly. they're doing? At, at worst case scenario is when, if you can't get out of that situation, let's say you, you know what I mean? You, you holding something on your hip, then okay, defend yourself to get out of that situation. You don't, you don't go off and, and start shooting just because you're there and you feel like you can. You know what I mean? This is what happens when you get idiots like him, get a firearm and think they tough shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it don't work that way. I think I think for him, like you said, he's going to halt his own success. And he's too egotistical to listen to anybody right. that may try to tell him, hey, yo, you need to chill out. Yeah, you would think having such shit sales with your first album that you would find some kind of humility. And especially, you know, getting caught for shooting in the club and no... None of your people stepped up for you. None. You would think all of this, all of this would have created some kind of humility. So the fact that he went out of his way to call his next album New Pac, just because he has a couple of pictures that compare to what Pac was going through, not for his lyrical ability, not for what he's going through with the police, in the media, none of that shit. Only because he had certain pictures that look just like some of the shit that Tupac went through. And that album's going to be Dumpster Juice just as well. Is, is it already out? I don't know. I think it's already sweet. Either way, it's hobos. probably trash. More than likely. More than likely. Because I, I don't think. If you're checking from, for Troy Ave, leave something in the comments and give me a good argument why you're checking for Troy Ave, if you don't mind at least. But it doesn't, sign, it doesn't stop there when it comes down to Kung Fu Kenny. First of all, design. Are, are you hip to his music? To who? Design. Design, I'm sorry. Like the panda name? No, uh, no, no, no. That's designer. I'm talking about design. No, you I, know who Design is. No, I, I really thought you were talking about the pandemic. And that was everybody's reaction when they heard this story that's come, that just came out. So apparently there is uh, an Instagram user called T Tinder. Wait, that, it's, it's, wait, wait, wait say, say that one more time. It's an Instagram user called T Tinder. T E A Tinder. User called yeah. T Tinder. Not even anybody too big, just a regular user. So he added uh, Design mm -hmm. and played uh, the clip. From DNA that I got, I got, I got, mm -hmm. I got. And apparently Design has a song called I Got. Mm -hmm. And in the song he goes, I got, I got, I got something, 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 something. He's trying to say that Kendrick bit Design. Hmm. So Design decides to tweet. So Kendrick just going to steal my shit on that DNA song like that, huh? How, how was this like recent stuff? Yeah, this was recent. And I'm assuming this design cat is this is just this is just my thinking, but I'm assuming this design cat is since he has a song, he's hip hop enthralled. Now, to my knowledge, 
hip hop artists will listen to other hip hop artists, especially ones that ain't made it. Like me and you, we listen to Kendrick album. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I can only assume that this Dizon cat may possibly have heard Kendrick's album. It's a good chance. You know what I mean? So now apparently Dizon song has been out for about like a year now. Okay, no, no, this is where I'm going. If this Dizon cat heard Kendrick's album, heard DNA, and didn't formulate his this tweet itself, it took an outside source to do so. I'm pretty sure Kendrick ain't bite this. Man. He probably did. I think it's the fact that somebody saw it and thought they were calling him out on it, and it was like, yeah, you know what? He's right. Now here's the kicker with that: mm-hmm. the song's been out for about a year now. Mm-hmm. The uh, the uh, the Dizon track I got. Mm-hmm. He only has like he just barely has like two thousand spins on the actual song. Of course, he's a SoundCloud artist, right? So that's exactly where you see all his records at. It has just barely hit two thousand songs on it. The thing is, they reported it didn't hit two thousand plays until that tweet came until out. the actual tweet itself came out. And it was like, okay, who the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they listened to the song or whatever. So his shit just hit two two thousand. It low key sounds like it's all just a publicity stunt. That was his way of getting people to go listen to his music. Very, very well could be. Because well I'm, I'm pretty be. sure T. Tinder is probably one of his homeboys. Somebody in his would, camp. Would not be surprised. Would not be surprised at all. It's just funny that we're in that type of age to where, you know what I mean, you, you getting people, hey, they're, they're biting my shit. Or, hey, this, no, come on, bro. Because I don't give a fuck. Good music is good music. If he made that song and let's say Kendrick did bite it. Mm-hmm. That means Kendrick had to think this song was hot. Right. Right? So that means other people outside of Kendrick would have to would think have this song, that song was hot. hot. Exactly. You know what I mean? So come on, bro. You, you, you're fraudulent. You're very fraudulent. Everything everything about you right now is knockoff. You, you're that being outside of uh, Sandy Alley in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, man, shout out to Kendrick. Like, yeah. he, through, through all the bullshit that he normally deals with as an artist and uh, with his popularity, He's accomplishing things that cats can't even uh, imagine doing right now. Yeah, er- er- everybody's dope. Everybody the king, but it's all about what your what your resume say, what your car facts look exactly. like. Exactly, exactly. And, and Kendrick just out here just he's racking up the mileage, dude. He's doing a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. I applaud everything that man is doing mm-hmm. right now. Me too, me too. And I mean, shit, I'm I'm looking forward to some more music. Oh, I can't wait. He said he got some more coming. Now, here's here's a question. Remember when there were rumors saying that he was supposed to drop? A follow up to Damn on Easter Sunday. If that shit is true, then fuck a Steve Stevens because he hella just <laughs> shut. She just cut off the world to some more Kendrick music. Yeah, he should burn even slower now just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what his follow up would have been, and, and especially he's going off of the holiday season, and you saw how low key controversial some of the conversation was. And Damn, mm-hmm. man, we probably would have got some amazing music. Oh yeah, that, that, that music would have been. It would have been dope. It would have been. Hands down, some of the dopest shit that we've heard easily within the last decade. And who knows what it could have, what, what, what it actually could have been, because Untitled and Unreleased were throwaway joints mm-hmm. from from To Pimp a Butterfly, and even that's a classic mm-hmm. album. Yeah, you're, you're right, because I I play that Levitate joint. That's Easy. my shit. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, you know, and it's funny uh, since we're since we're on this topic, I had seen a question that was very, it was a good question. It stumped the hell out of me. And the question was. Um, if Tupac or Biggie uh, came back to life and were riding with you in the car and said, P- play me the best hip hop album since I've been gone, what would you play? Hmm. Exactly. That's exactly what I was like. Wow. I mean, the, granted, best, the best album since 97. Granted, it's been a ton of music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's literally been a ton of music. What truly would you play? What would you play? I need a little more time to to think about this. I saw I, you've had some time. To nah, sit with this. because I, I haven't. I, I can't think of what I would play. I, I think maybe I can give three artists. Probably it'd probably either be J, Fifty, or shit. Um, damn, you know, I I, I don't know. I'm gonna get slandered. I know I am, but fuck it. Bring it on. I would say the best project I've heard since Big died, because he's the latter. He's, the yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll say since Big since died. Since Big died, has to be Good Kid, Mad City. I was going to throw Kendrick in there. I don't know. I think it's, it's very obvious yeah, for I, us to do I, that, but I, 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 was, I, just, I can't well, think of who else. In my top three, I was going to throw him in there, but I can't really say. It's, it's hard, because I can't say Kendrick 
and then think about all the other shit. You know, you got the blueprint. You know what I mean? You got Amazing album. You got you got Get Rich or Die Trying. You got shit. You got some of Drake's albums or or pieces of works. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's you, you got geez, it's a lot the, of artists the, out there. The who, only reason the only reason I'm choosing Good Kid Mad City is off of replay value. Now, even though Blueprint was an amazing C D, mm-hmm. that to me, when I had Blueprint, it had replay value for probably about two years. Mm-hmm. To where you could just that's still the one of the main albums that you just put on and put in rotation. Nowadays it's all it's, it's kinda like you come around to blueprint. Right. How long ago did Good Kid Mad City come out? That was in what, two thousand twelve? Two thousand yeah, it was two thousand twelve. It was twenty twelve? Yeah, twenty twelve. Here we are five years later and I can still slap that whole album mm-hmm. track, you know what I'm saying, top to bottom. Hmm. Like yeah, if first, you know, if, as soon as the first song come on, as soon as the first interlude an intro come on, I'm like, Oh, this is just me. Right. I'm gonna slap this just throughout the way. <laughs> so to me it, it all boils down to replay value and I don't think any album has had like I love section eighty. I love mm-hmm. section eighty, but that's not something I could just throw on. Mm-hmm. Good kid Mad City, no matter what mood I'm in, that album's gonna cater to my mood. Hmm. Uh to I mean, since I seen the question, I, I still can't formulate uh um uh, an answer for it. Mm. I truly could not. If if that were me in the car with them, two things I'd be doing. Number one, I'm calling TMZ because we right. got to figure out how to fuck <laughs> you, you back. You know what I mean? Two, there's three things I'm doing. Calling TMZ. Two, and I'm like, hey, when you dropping something. And I'm like, yo, if I go to the studio right now, can y'all put something down again? <laughs> right. And then three, I, I would really be like, bro, I can't play just one album for you. Mm. You know what I mean? We can take, I, I'd be like, look, we can take a cross-country road trip. Because I want everybody to see that Pac is alive and with me. Right. I'm all, we're we're going to run out of gas before we get to our destination. Right. I'm going to say that right now. And B, I would just play him so many different kinds of, of music, hip hop based music, because I, I really can't put a definite. I can't, I can't give him one album. I, can't, I, I truly can't give him one album. It's actually another really good conversation topic. Y'all go ahead and leave them comments uh, wherever you're listening at. We want to know who is the album what is the album that you're gonna put on for Pac and Big I, 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 that's actually a really good question yeah I, I have a new question I wanna pose as well you're in the same car with Pac and Big mm-hmm. and Pac asks you even though Big had two mm-hmm. which one of us had a better body of work hmm. it's kinda unfair it is kinda unfair in two albums and, Biggie did some shit yeah it, it is kinda unfair but for me, I, I used to growing up. I was biased, you know what I mean? Because naturally, yeah. Because because you know we we're we're closer to New York, right? So we we got a lot of big. Um, I I think it's kind of unfair because you can't really compare the two. Because Big was more of a storyteller. Yeah, they, they, they were definitely different lanes. Easy. You know what I mean? Big Big had a lot of projects where he was telling a story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hell, when you think about it, damn near all of his songs, except for like his commer- his his singles, he was telling a story. Nah, even his singles, Loki was a story. In a sense, in a sense, yeah, with Pac. Shit, Juicy, his first, yeah. his, his official single, that yeah. was a story about the come up. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So I think they're I was kinda, a little more biased because I was, I, was, I was out this way. Yeah, so they're, they're a little bit. As I got older and I started to really understand hip hop more, mm-hmm. then I kind of switched and, 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 and leaned a little bit more towards Pac. But granted, Pac has had more albums, more projects. Mm-hmm. He's also had more failures in those objects because. Two Pocket Lips Now, his debut album. Wasn't, I don't hear nobody talking about Two yeah, no Pocket Lips Now. No one really talks about Two Pocket Lips He had now. a lot of chances where he, he had a lot more error mm-hmm. than Big Cat. So it's, it's really hard, but I, I would probably say Pot only because of All Eyes on Me. Amazing album. Because even though that, that was a double disc, so if you want to just take that double disc and compare it to Big's, even though, you know what I mean, I, I'll probably lean towards Pac. Mm-hmm. But it would have a little asterisk next right. to it. You know what I mean? It, it, that's hard, but that's a great question. Yeah, I'm going to have to lean towards Pac. Um, granted, Big gave you back-to-back classics, gems. Yeah. Just gems. And he was a storyteller, like you said. Mm-hmm. But Pac, he was just, he was that philosopher. He was mm-hmm. the professor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when you go to, when you listen to a Pac record, not only are you enjoying yourself, you're learning something. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. And it felt, it just, it felt good to put on a Pac record, but... And I've had this conversation with people before as well. Even though Pac is my favorite rapper, uh, the Don Caluminati is the reason I even started writing. Um, to me, Big was he was the better lyricist. Better lyricist, yes. He was just, he was just the better lyricist. Yes. Like he could he was go. A, he was the better lyricist, and he let his lyricism kind of 
create the track for him. Mm -hmm. But Pac was a better song maker. But you know what? You you just you made a comment when you were talking about it's hard to compare the two. That actually poses another question. So why is there so much comparison between Drake and Kendrick? The same way as a lot of comparison between Big and Pop. I mean, people are gonna look at the 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 top people of what they do. Yeah, it's like it's it's the it's the, it's the top people, but it's so hard to compare the two because they're in two completely different lanes. Yeah, they they are. They are in two completely different lanes, and I mean. I don't, I don't, I, I truly don't want to say this. If you, if you look at it, Drake is probably in more of a Pac lane, being that he came out first. I'm saying being that he came out first, being he has more projects than Kendrick. That's the only thing you, 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 you got the, he got this look on his face and trust me, I, <laughs> I did not want to say that, but I'm saying far as, far as the, the amount of work that they put out. Um, that's that's all I'm comparing it to. I'm going to have to disagree with you because even with body of work, I would – now, this is – I'm for sure going to get shitted on, but I'm going to have to explain it. I put <laughs> – I put Drake more so in the big lane, even though I don't think Drake is anywhere nope. near big. He no. can't even – he He's even not anywhere near track. either one of them. When I was saying it, it was more so on the – Actual quantity. Oh yeah, of yeah. Work. That, that, I, I got what you were saying. The only reason I'm comparing them more to Big is because even though I think Kendrick is amazing mm. and I think Pac is amazing, Big and Drake have more singles. They have more singles. They have more but, radio friendly songs. But the reason I didn't put him in with Big is because, like we just said, Big is a lyricist. I'm mm -hmm. not getting. A, I'm not getting no lyricism from Drake. L I'm Drake lyricism. spit when he spits. Well, yeah, when he spits. But I'm, not, but I'm not giving him. The lyricist title more than I'm gonna give it to Kendrick. Yeah, well, well Drake. Well, Drake doesn't want the lyricist title. He wants to be known as a pop artist. Exactly, that, and that's why I said that I'm only putting him in the pop lane for his quantity of music. Oh, okay, I you know what you. I mean? With because if we if we being real, Kendrick once he actually gets more projects out, I would say in the next two three years, he would probably be more in that pop lane, pop and Big's lane than anything because he's giving you lyricism. He obviously can tell a story, and he's gonna have a lot of music. Out. I would say when it comes to work ethic. Drake is for sure in that pock lane. Yeah. Because Drake was yeah. Drake was everywhere last yeah. year. I, I, I'll give that to you. Last I'll year. give that to you. But would you say that he's you you you're giving him that because of work ethic, but a lot of people reach out to him too. It is I, I think it's different. It's different if you know Drake what? was people, going to people, go get it uh -huh. opposed to people saying, Hey, come But come that's get the it. but that's the thing though. He is going to get it. Every when Drake finds a song that he likes, he reaches out to that artist like, yo, can we do this remix? He mm -hmm. reached out to McConey. He reached out to uh to uh uh what's his name what's his name uh, uh, Gucci I don't know how I just lost his name <laughs> he reached out to Gucci mm -hmm. you know when he came home like Drake and that's one thing I give him because that's that's literally how he found his way to oversaturate the game mm -hmm. is he made sure no matter where you turn you're gonna hear Drake mm -hmm. he took the Lil Wayne approach and he saw it work perfectly for yeah. Wayne yeah you know and un funny thing is it worked for Drake because think about it you haven't heard a bad Drake feature. <laughs> You got a point. You ever heard of a single bad Drake feature? And he know he knows what a hit sound like. He know what it looked like. He know what it could possibly do. He has a great eye fix for shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know. So as far as as far as his work ethic, he he is probably one of the few artists uh, from one of the few artists now that has the work ethic of Pac because he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He now he may ha not have the content like Pac. He may he not have, a have the philosophy near. like Pac anywhere near it. You know what I'm saying? He's miles away. Mm -hmm. But as far as work ethic, he's grinding. And I think Kendrick has a work ethic of big <laughs> to the point where he could put out something that you could just sit with for years before the next thing comes out. Mm -hmm. Drake, now I'm not saying this is how Pac was because a lot of times you still getting over the last Pac record before the next Pac record came out. Mm -hmm. But Drake has a body of work that once you hear it, it's like, cool. What's next? You can't really just sit with Drake right, albums for saying. an extended period of time. You know what I'm saying? You saying. run through it, you fuck with it, and you go from there. Mm -hmm. Kendrick, we've been sitting with Untitled Unreleased for like a year and a half now yeah. <laughs> before we finally got damn it. Niggas are still playing to Pimple Butterfly. It's, yeah. it's cats that think that damn is coming out too close to Pimple Butterfly because they're still getting over that. I wasn't a huge fan of To Pimper Butterfly. Whoa, blasphemy. I need a new co-host. I, I, I wasn't. No, I'm not saying it was bad. I, it just wasn't what I was looking no, for. No, I, I hear that it was too political for a lot of people. It wasn't. I won't even say it was too political for me because I understand the importance of when it came out, what was going on. Mm -hmm. Every other month, 
one of us was getting killed. Right. You know what I mean? The, the different shit that was going on, I understand the importance of it. I just wasn't, some of the songs, they, the, the way they sounded to me, it wasn't necessarily what they were saying, just the way it overall sounded to me. I wasn't really rocking with too much. Mm. Um, but damn, I, I throw that thing on and let it ride. Yeah, that's that's the soundtrack of the day, no yeah, matter what I, day it is. I, I let it ride. Once DNA hit, shit. Talk you about a buck after 20. That, definitely. Easy. <laughs> like, shit, I'm on, I'm on everybody down with this joint on. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're about to wrap this thing up, but now I guess our uh, our Facebook fuck around, I guess, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to run with. Uh, to all the ear hustlers, kind of circling back to love and politics, when do you think... Donald Trump truly realized this wasn't the job for him. Obviously, it wasn't 100 days in because he's had enough time to formulate this opinion. What, yeah. When do you think he started to see, like, you know what? This president shit ain't really <laughs> what I thought it was about to be. <laughs> like, Obama made this shit look like cake. He was golfing every day type shit. Well, Obama was putting up shots more so every day. <laughs> so, Kev, when do you think? Mm. Yeah, 100 days in. I would want to say, hmm, that's a good question. Um, no, I don't know, because I, I, I don't, I followed what was going on, but I didn't follow what was going on enough. If I had to really think about it, though, I would say, you know, what? I don't know. Yeah, I said something to definitely think about. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I like you said, he definitely was thinking about this for a while. It's definitely been on his mind. It, it, he definitely didn't wake up one morning like, you know what? It, it, this had to be sitting with him for a minute. I think it hit him how hard it was about to be when um, his Muslim ban was vetoed twice. I can agree with you on that. I think that's when he was like, wait, so I can't just do whatever the fuck I want to? I, yeah. All I, I did I, was blame Obama for everything. And it turns out he didn't have all the power. Yeah. I, I don't I, like this. I think I can agree <laughs> with you on that one. I think you're right. I, I think I, yeah, I 100% agree with you on that. I think, I think that's when he probably man. was like, you know what? I low-key think him dropping the missiles was his way of being like, okay, well, I got the power again. I don't know if anybody wa watches American Dad, but he's now the decider again. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's... I think that was him getting back to, okay, cool, I got some power. But I think him having this Muslim ban vetoed twice, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's when he realized that's this is going like, to be much know, harder. Man, fuck this shit. I mean, shit, think about it. Uh, I want to say it was he, when he was like 75 days in or 60 days, something like that. He was damn near about to replace his entire cabinet. Yeah. With with Democrats at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, I think he realized kind of early that this wasn't really for him. Mm -hmm. And now he decided to let everybody know, but that's only 100 days. We still got three more years. <laughs> right. Right, we three, we ain't even hit the, the half right mark the half of this mark. year. Exactly. Like, bruh, come on, just just resign, go do Uber. You know what I mean? Go go do whatever else you want to go do. Go golfing since it seems like that's all you want to do anyway. Since that's the look, <laughs> right? Go ahead and and just resign. Go do some golf. As a matter of fact, fire people first, <laughs> and then resign. So therefore, they can't fuck shit up when you gone. Also, have sex with Mike Pence and put it on video so he can't step up as president immediately after. Have him walk in with an immediate scandal, <laughs> something. Because uh, that's the only thing I'm uh, I'm I'm a little bit more afraid of with Trump. Because Trump is very influential. It very, seems like you know very. what I mean. It seems like you can talk to him, and if you if you do it the right kind of way, you might get him to do whatever you want him to do. Right. Um, I sounded like Bill Cosby when I said that. <laughs> um, but Trump, Trump out here just giving the country quaaludes and shit. <laughs> but with uh, Mike Pence, man, he that man looks like he just has so much hatred oh, yeah. in his eyes for anybody that isn't white, mm -hmm. a white male at that. You know what I mean? With Trump, yeah, he, uh, he probably he probably don't rock with anybody that's that's not. White, because because obviously not he not the caucus, right, right. But but Mike Pence, man, he just seemed like he, he. You see how he was looking at them people over in South Korea? Oh yeah, like they were beneath him, right? Like, bro, you was the same dude that was in that gay bar, though, right? Chilling. Come on, man. So I'm I'm a little bit more afraid if if he was to step up and start fucking with shit than I am with Trump. He's low key gonna fuck it up even more. Mm -hmm. I think we should just we can have these different political leaders for these countries and stuff like that. But I think when it's wartime, we shouldn't be sending countries to war. What we should do is send the president, North Korea, you talking shit. Okay. You and Donald Trump go head up there. 
Right, y'all, y'all meet in the middle, y'all squab it out, and just go from there. Exactly, yeah, and just go from there. We ain't got to bring all our people into it, and so on and so forth. That's that's bullshit. Or what they should do, because this this might change shit too. What they should do is, um, we don't go to war. Mm. Everybody do what I said. They go head up, and whoever whoever wins will be the one that that is like control of that country. Yeah, they should have they should have had it like that when Obama was in the office when right. uh, and, Kim and, Jong was initially talking this shit. Right. I think and, Obama would have gave him the hands. And the reason I say <laughs> that is because let's say we did that, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say let's say the world came to that agreement that our leaders are gonna fight and whoever wins is going to take over. That would get the the leaders that means these niggas would be in training constantly to to fight. I think low key the only one if you look at all the world leaders, I think the only one that truly may know how to actually get them up would probably be Putin. Mm. It, it, he it, might. I say uh, he's some kind of a belt. He or something might. like that. He, he might. He, and in that the dude, uh, the China leader. Yeah, he probably got some he, squabbles. Yeah, he 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 looked like he might kick the shit out of you. I feel like anybody could whoop Ken Jong's ass though. <laughs> oh yeah, he he looks like he a big ass crybaby. You could just to give me. him some work. And he, he looks like he a big ass crybaby to me. I was um. I don't want to stay on too long, but I was listening to a, another podcast and the guest that they had on the show um, went to North Korea mm-hmm. and he was just talking about the shit that's going on. And basically what he was saying was how everybody think thinks how bad North Korea is. He said, it's worse it's than worse, what you yeah. think. I've heard I was that. like, man, I, I'm not fucking with North Korea. I don't yeah, want to, yeah, they, they <laughs> they I, I don't want to go to North Korea. You know how in some countries you truly want to go to, like, I want to go to Italy. I want to go to mm-hmm. Venice. I want, you know, I want to go to those places. North Korea is not somewhere that's on my list. I don't think it's on anybody's list. It's, it's if you're trying to go and make it back, oh, it shouldn't really be on your Mm-mm. list. So again, uh, let us know in the comments, when do you think Trump realized that this wasn't a job for him? <laughs> Kev, where can they find you at, bro? Uh, same as usual. Underscore Hollywood Kev on Twitter and Instagram. Um, go ahead. Say what's up. Do something. Not smoke your voice. <laughs> At Big Los UTC on Facebook. Still ain't got an Instagram. Uh, y'all know what y'all can do when it comes down to Facebook. Uh, BeatNetworkOnline.com. Make sure y'all go there to check out the content. BeatNetworkOnline.com slash merch. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get you some of that official noise apparel since mm-hmm. you guys tune in every week. Might yes, as sir. well. Uh, don't forget to check out Like Water for Chocolate. Don't forget to check out Back to the Classics. Coming up, we still do have Pillow Talk Sin in the City. I really look forward to that show. Yep. Make sure everybody does. One thing I do need to explain with that show is... I understand we, you know, we we joke and we have a lot of fun when it comes down to uh, sex because you know it's everybody's favorite pastime. Mm-hmm. It is going to all be rooted in sex, but it's not going to be specifically just sex. You know, it's going to be some sexual health awareness. It's going to be a lot of uh, different stories and generating opinions. The root of it is going to be sex, but now they're going to get on there and be like, "I can suck a dick for twelve hours." Yeah, nothing like that. You <laughs> know what I mean? It ain't going to be like that. So get your mind out the gutter and just be ready to hear some informative as well as sexual conversation. Yeah, it's gonna, coming. Oh, you said informative and Put entertaining. Me, it's coming. <laughs> ha, 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 ha! I like that. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, as we, always, we childish as shit. Uh, hello. <laughs> as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we appreciate your participation and your love. And as always, it's Big Los Hollywood Cav. It's the noise.